Lima. Welcome to the newest episode of Spitball and Sports. I'm John. Uh, Scott had a prior engagement and he's at a meat raffle. So that's fun. People love my meat raffle. So he's there. Well, he'll be back next week. Um, Robin will be talking with us shortly here. Hey, everyone. Yeah, Robin's here. Um, gutting it out, doing whatever it takes. How you doing, Robin, right now? A little tired, but you're all right? Yeah, a little tired, but I'm all right. All right, very good. Thank you for joining me. And then in a little bit, um, to join us during the portion where we select our games, the NFL games, Charlie Turner, co-host of Falls Count Anywhere on Saturdays. You can see that show. He'll be joining us to do some picks, NFL picks. Um, speaking of NFL picks, it's some one of the best years we've ever had. So far, we're 44-24-1 and one at 63.7%. And uh, college football, 25 and 13, 65.7%. So that's some of the best um, we've done ever. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's just unreal. That's as good as you get over 60%, you're feeling good about any sport. Yeah. Hell, even over 55%. Yeah. You know? So a um, couple things before we get into our top five and, and bottom five. Uh, Big news, Joe Burrow last night, the Bengals lose 34 to 20. You know, even before Burrow got hurt, it looked as though Baltimore dominated them. Uh, the Bengals couldn't really stop him at all, it felt like. But either way, Burrow, you saw him not be able to throw, hurt his wrist, and he is out for the season with a torn ligament. He'll be getting surgery, I guess, as soon as possible. But um, when you saw it last night, you had to know it didn't look good. So, um and Chris is here. The other half of Falls Count Anywhere. Hey, Chris. Um, so, yeah, Joe Burrow's done. Browning right now. Young guy, their quarterback. I don't know if they'll try to bring anyone in, if there is anyone to really bring in. Um, so that could be it for the Bengals, I would assume. Um, because unlike Cleveland, who Cleveland has a, has a strong defense, very strong defense. Um, a, a, Miles Garrett is – Yeah. He's just a beast. They are um, – that's a defense that win that could win in the playoffs, but of course, yeah, they also have lost their quarterback Watson. Um, and today, thirty-eight-year-old Joe Flacco, I guess, was in Cleveland working out for the Browns. I mean, the Browns had Joshua Dobbs, and you see how good Joshua Dobbs is doing in Minnesota. Um, I'm sure they wish they'd have kept him. Obviously, um, they have PJ Walker, but they must not be. Uh, well, they need a backup anyways to PJ Walker, so Flacco yeah. is the is the thought at thirty-eight years old. I don't know. I mean, 38. I mean, he's maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's been guys, I mean, that have played obviously sure. at age, but he's been out of the league for a little bit. So was it a couple of years now. Probably. Yeah. I think he's on the jets. Could be good. That could him. be good. And that could be bad. True. It could be. Um, but both teams, it's unfortunate because mostly for the Browns, I, I don't know if the Bengals were going to be good at all this year. Honestly. I mean, they, they had their moments where they'd look good, but then you'd see last night where it, they just weren't – I don't think they were any match. They could not stop them. No. In any way – in my opinion, in any way. Running, throwing, it didn't matter. Um, so I think the Bengals are really reeling and possibly are done. Um, you know, Burrow's out. There's no defense to do anything to be strong. You know, there, there's no there's no part of that team that makes me feel like I do feel about Cleveland. Right. Like if Cleveland were to somehow find some kind of just mediocre quarterbacking, you'd be like, okay, they could still uh, make a playoff but run, you know, but um, now I, I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know for the Bengals. It's probably done. Um, before we get into that bottom five, let's do this real fast. Um, college football, they did switch the playoff of Georgia and Ohio State one and two. Georgia's back to one, deservedly, I think. Ohio State two, Michigan three, FSU four. And then sitting at five is undefeated Washington. Along with six, seven, and eight is Oregon, Texas, and Alabama, all with one loss. Texas beat Alabama. But as long as Alabama can stay clean, play Georgia in that in the conference final thing, championship, Alabama will make it. If they beat Georgia, I'm sure Oregon, you know, they got the one loss. I'm going to say this. I did pick the Washington game against Oregon State, and I'll let you know what I think about that later. But that's going to be a tough game for Washington. And um, if they lose this week, then that really just opens wide up, you know, because now you're talking about four teams with one loss. And um, 
I, I think Alabama sits there just waiting. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels like because they they have as much of a shot as Ohio State, Michigan. Like Ohio State, Michigan are both in, but the team that loses that game is probably out. Unless it's such a close game that it's like a you know a one point thing or something crazy. Right. Maybe they. I don't know though. So they're kind of in the same boat. It feels like. And I've been pushing Alabama a little because I think Milrow has started to play really well. The quarterback. Yeah. He looks, I don't, I'm not saying anything about the NFL. And I don't even care about the NFL. I'm talking about in college football right now. He looks awfully good. He's he gotten better every week. Um, strong, a strong arm, throws the ball, runs, does the whole thing. So uh, it'll be interesting this week. Got a lot of good games. And I picked three of them, Robin, this week. Did you? Yeah, three college games. Um, I think it might be time. Are you ready to do our top five, bottom five? I'm ready. All right, let's bring up the. Uh, we got theme music for it, so we might as well. Might as well use our theme. Maybe. Yes. Why not? Hold on, let's find it. That, this is a problem. You'd think I'd have it already, right? <laughs> All right, we're welcoming you back to the top five, bottom five uh, by Spitball and Sports. This is what we've done all year. It's kind of our power ranking every after every week. Um, so why don't we get going? Because shortly we're going to have Charlie Turner from Falls Count Anywhere. He'll be on with us to talk about uh, this week's upcoming um, NFL schedule, maybe make some picks with us and stuff. Robin, are you ready? I'm ready. We should start with the bottom five. Okay. That's probably the place to go. Yeah. Um, at number 28. Yeah, who do you have at 28? You know, I, I had a hard time with this one between two teams. Um, I ended up going with the Packers, but I could have just as easily gone with the Bears. So you got the Packers at 28. But I do have the Packers at 28. Now, me and you don't know our pit. We don't even know what we've done. Right. We have no idea. I went with the Bears at 28. Okay. Um, that's who I have there. How about number 29? I have the Cardinals at 29. I have the Cardinals as well. 29, okay. Yeah. Number 30 for me is the Giants. And 30 for me was the Patriots. Patriots, okay. We know 32 is going to be Carolina. Right. Um, at 1 and 8, and the Bears are happy. Um, my 31 was the Patriots. And my 31 was the Giants. Okay, so out of this group, and include the Bears in that with the Packers, which of these teams would you say, looking at them, could – Go on a run that will hurt their playoff spot, their drafting position. You know what I mean? Like, which one could do that? Like, for me, I think it would be the Cardinals because Kyler Murray's coming back. If he and so's Connor, right? James, and Connor. James Connor. Yeah, uh, the Patriots, by the way, benched Mac Jones. That guy has just been screwed over there, over and yeah. over. Yeah, I kind of feel that way about him. Yeah, they've given him nothing. All you ever hear is how quarterbacks need players, right? They need guys around them. Remember the Justin Fields thing? Right. Or e even, even Josh Allen, all that. All of them. They all, you got to give them receivers, you got to give them something. They've given him nothing. Right. And have benched him every step of the way. Every two minutes, they, they took him out in the final drive to win the game the other yeah, they day. Did. I know. Um, if I'm him, I want out immediately. I don't know if he's going to be a bad, I don't know what he'll do somewhere, but if I'm a team, I take him and see what you got. Yeah. Even if he's your backup, I guess. But I'll tell you right now, he's not been given any fair shot in new england whatsoever no wide receivers nothing and they just keep on hammering away on him benching him and then i would be furious if i'm him the giants appear with devito to be done yeah i don't know how they could win a game with him i don't either. Back, you know this week now they're playing who washington uh and sam howell's been good that guy's throwing the ball all over the place i know i mean as far as fantasy goes yeah he'd be someone you'd want for sure 300 yards every week, it seems like, with him. So um, so the Giants, I mean, I'm hoping the Bears don't do anything stupid as far as start winning a few games. Fields is back. Right. I mean, I thought that too. it's a little concerning um, with them that they don't win too much at this point because you're going to have Carolina's first pick, which I, I don't even know if I, I almost sometimes hope that Carolina doesn't finish with the last first pick. Right. Maybe it'll be second or third because the things could – 
you don't you can't trust them. You gotta you gotta make sure the Bears have a spot where they can't make a mistake. Right. And this year, if they have the first pick overall, it could be a mistake. Yes. I think you could make a big mistake. I, I do not like the quarterback from USC. I'm not yeah. a big fan at all of his. I wouldn't want him. He says he doesn't want to. He's, I mean, he's going to be picky where he goes. I wouldn't want him at all. And the way this has looked the last three weeks for him, I don't know if he's going to be as picky as he thinks he's going to be. Right. You know, when he's crying in the stands, holy cow, that's a little much. You know, yeah. he didn't just lose a Super Bowl. He didn't just, and even then, what are you doing? Right. I mean, I, I just thought that was, I, I wasn't a big fan of seeing that. And he hasn't played well. He really hasn't. He hasn't played well in big spots. Um, and I don't know about the Packers. You know, that was one of your teams you put in there at 28. Could they, sure, with their running game they have, if Aaron Jones feels okay? Right. They could possibly um, do something, I guess, to maybe hurt their draft or position. Because do they pick a quarterback? That oh, would be God. interesting. Yeah. What do they do? Is just as much as you think of Chicago, what is what do they do with the first time of Jordan Love? Right. Um I, I every one of these teams and the Giants are screwed because how can they take a quarterback after what they've given Jones? Right. I mean, but they need one. They should. They should. Uh the Patriots obviously, Carolina no, I not yet. Um the Bears and Packers probably well, I no, I don't know. That, that, that's the big key. They don't even. I don't even know if. I certainly don't know if the Bears. Obviously, they had. They don't know what they're doing. It's such a bad dumpster fire type situation that. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if they know what they have. If they don't know what they have, or what's happening for them. So that's why they probably, if they have the first pick, it. They're going to have to trade it. They'll have to trade it away again. Yeah. Because I don't know what they do. Because. It's boy, they they. It's so funny. The last couple of years, they've had such high picks, and they did such a good time, good job. You thought with getting DJ Moore and all that, and it's just blown up in their face again. And they gave up the second round pick for what's his face Claypool. That doesn't work out. But but Joey Porter Jr. is playing well for Pittsburgh now, which they could definitely use Joey Porter Jr. Right at this point. Um, boy, they're a mess. I think the Packers probably are less a mess than the Bears at this point. Yeah. See, my thought was that they had much higher expectations out of Jordan Love and what was going to happen this year than the Bears did for Justin Fields. I think the media and, put a lot of it on Justin Fields. I right. mean, I think there was a thought he was going to be a top 10 quarterback in the league this year. Like, I am statistically and everything. You know that? Yeah. Some places had him in the top 10 before the, you know what I, yeah. No, they're, they're too a mess, but I, the Bears just, you know, they, they are just disgustingly bad. Um, yeah. In every aspect. Can't even have coordinators. You, you're firing guys for stuff off the field. It's insane. Yeah, that's true. Top five. You ready for them? Ready. All right. My number five, I got two of them. I couldn't decide between the seven and two Lions and the six and three Dolphins. I've got the seven and two Lions at, mine. at five. Yeah. All right, I got the Dolphins in there with them, probably at a five and a half, six. I don't know what I could have done with them, but I feel like I want to put them in there. Um, trying to think, and they got they uh, be interesting. Th this game's an interesting one coming up. We'll talk about it with them and the Raiders. Yeah. Um, number four, I got the Chiefs at seven and two. I have the 49ers at six and three. Okay, who do you have number three? I have the Chiefs. Yeah, okay, we're gonna be flip flopping. I have the 49ers. And then at two, I have the Ravens. Me too, and the Eagles one? Yeah. Okay, that's exactly how I have it. We just flip-flopped three and four, and I threw Miami in the mix there. Yeah. All right, out of these teams that we're looking at, which one, how do you put this? Which one falls, which one could fall out? See, the Lions aren't falling out of anything because their division's so bad. Right. That. They're going to win 11 games. You know what I mean? Right. They're sure. going to win 11. They're good, too. But they're, they're even if they got on a cold, it's, how cold could it be? It can't be that cold. Right. You know, you got the Bears twice. That gives you nine right off the bat. Um, you know what concerns me is the Chiefs a little bit. I've been a little concerned with them. I don't know if it's injury to, to Kelsey, you know, earlier in the year. 
Yeah, but I think that the injury to Kelsey showed that they could withstand that and still win games. Yeah, they would they miss him for a game? Yeah. Um I do think Mahomes looks more healthy than ever. Yeah. He looks awfully healthy this year. I mean, as far as running wise, he's moving around. Right. Um, that was so unfortunate for Burrow. It finally looked like his legs were better. Right. And now his wrist is he tore a ligament yeah. in his wrist. Um I think the 49ers have after that three game losing streak, I think they have fixed themselves. Oh yeah. And I think the addition of Chase Young is huge. Yeah, Bosa really played well. Um, reuniting them guys. They looked good. And I have to apologize to Baltimore. They are very good. Yeah. Um, I told you. Yeah, you're right. They are very good. They're they're awfully good. Um and I think right now they almost remind me of the Eagles. They kind of are similar. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Very um, similar. I think the Eagles have better offensive skill players. Yeah. Definitely. Um because I'm not crazy about Odell Beckham and who do they got? Zay what do they got? Zay who do they got over there? Zay Jones, right? Or Flowers? Flowers. Flowers, I'm sorry. So yeah, I, he's obviously really good. The running game is a whole mess of people for the Ravens. Right. Um and the Eagles probably the Eagles an Eagles Ravens Super Bowl wouldn't be that bad. No. If that's what happened. Um what do you think about Miami? You know, I Sometimes I think that they belong in this conversation, and sometimes I, I think that they don't. Right. Um, I guess they're a wait and see. Like, I can't wait to see where they are on our list next week. Yeah, and then they play Buffalo. That'll be a good one for them. Right. To just, if they're, they should just ham, they should hammer them down. Right. It's in Miami. They, they should owe them one. Um, I think they're close, though. I do. I think they're right there at the top five. Because it's hard for me with them and the Lions. I don't know what the Lions really are. I don't know what they are either, but they don't stop. No, they don't stop. They got a good they, – their defense is good, you know. And, and they got all the momentum, like, yeah. and all that stuff. And they got a good running game and kind of a good receiver. I yeah. mean, he's good, St. Brown. I mean, what, I shouldn't say that. And – Who's their tight? I don't even remember who their tight end is right now off the top of my head. But uh, I always want to say Hawkinson, but he's gone, obviously, to the Vikings. Right. Um, could the Lions? The Lions are on 11 games, Robin. There's no way they don't. How can't they? Yeah. I mean. Yeah, they do. They just. They're, they're going to win the division. Right. Obviously. So that gives them right there, no matter what happens, a home game to start. Right. Um, I don't know. It's it's and then you look at the the division with the where the Ravens are. The Steelers are six and three. I know, isn't that crazy? They just keep somehow winning. Them and Cleveland this week play each other, and they're very similar. Even yes. Cleveland without a quarterback is similar. PJ Walker or Pickett, what's the difference? Right. Um, boy, that's gonna that actually is gonna be a really good game. We'll pick that one later. The Eagles are probably, I guess, right now the, and I don't think they've played as well as they can. Yeah, no, I don't think we haven't seen many. I mean, they beat Dallas, right? Um, wasn't that who they beat the other day? Yeah, a couple, yeah, and that was a that was a good win for them. But I mean, they're a weird eight and one, but they're you know how good they are. You just and, and, and AJ Brown is as good as he's ever been. Yeah, uh, Devontae Smith it could be a number one on another team. And he's kind of not even used that all. Well, he had a good week last week, I believe. Yeah. But, you know, he's been kind of just pushed aside. Yeah. Ever since A.J. Brown said that he wasn't getting the ball enough. Yeah, he said he wanted the ball. He's like 7'11 or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he said that. Someone said that. One of these guys said they were 7'11 because they're always open. I don't yeah. know who that is. Might as well be him. He should have said it. Yeah, why not? I guess. Um, you know what's bad is when Chase Claypool says it. Right. Then you got to ask yourself. Yeah. He's a man. They were, everyone was right about him. You see, I felt, I thought of him in Notre Dame where I really, really liked him. When he played at Notre Dame, he was, un, he seemed unstoppable. He was a huge wide receiver that could run. He came to the NFL and it just, I wonder what happens. You generally don't get that out of Notre Dame players. You really don't. You usually don't have Notre Dame players that become an issue like this. For some reason, I don't know why. Yeah. I think, I'm just think I I can go all the way back as I can think, as far as I can think I can. Now they may not pan out in the league. They may right. not be as good as the, you know, all that stuff. I'm talking about being an issue. 
Right. Now I could be missing a lineman somewhere, somewhere down the road, but I mean, at the skill positions, you're generally not getting a problem. Right. You're I not hearing much like you're hearing out of Chase Claypool's an odd character. I don't know what the hell's wrong with him. He's got all the talent in the world. Yeah. To, I mean, he's in Miami now. I wonder if he'll play. I wonder if he, I don't even know if he's played, but they don't really need him. So that's one thing he's got to realize when he goes there. In right. Chicago, he thought they needed him and they kind of did need him. But, uh, you know, whatever. Um, so that's our top five and bottom five. Yeah. Way to go, Robin. We're pretty well on the same page. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't think I, I, it's probably hard for any. Who else could you throw in that top five? Right. Really? I mean, I got Miami on the outside looking in, but close. I think our guest is here. We should bring him in. Yeah. Let's let's bring him in. All right. Our guest tonight, someone I've been dying to get on the show, Charlie Turner. On Saturdays, I do the, I, I'm there. On Falls Count Anywhere, he's <laughs> one half of the uh, the group, man, with uh, Chris DiCarlo. Let me bring him in. Let's bring in Charlie. Hold on. Hey, what's up, hey, guys? Charlie. Not what's, hey, Charlie. Uh, hey, what's up, Rob? We're talking uh, Survivor Series, right? We got a five and a five. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll be tomorrow, but we probably could do it here. I mean, yeah, right? <laughs> honestly. Um, sports entertainment, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you first before we get into the games, you can help us pick. What yeah. uh, the, you're a Bills fan? Um, how'd you feel about everything and the firing of um, whatever the hell his name Ken is? Dorsey. Ken Dorsey. Well, Ken Dorsey. It, it was due. It was due. The you know the offense has fell flat since that Miami game, um, and then they were just you know what were they averaging seven points in the first half, the next however handful of games. Yeah. And the thing was, you know, uh, the one guy I listened to a lot lately is uh, Darren Orlovsky because he, you know, he breaks down film. He gets technical about things, man. He, you know, he, he hit the nail on the head with the bills, man. Like they were nowhere near what they were the last couple years. And he was just talking about how like the, the scheme, the schematics of, of their offense was just so predictable. Yeah. And he showed a couple plays where Denver was just, you know, they were cutting off Diggs's route. They knew where he was going. They, they bracketed a couple other guys. They knew where, exactly where they were going. They just became so predictable that it, they needed a change. They needed somebody with some more creativity, man. It sucked. It sucked. The, the funny thing is, I I always said it looked like the Giants started this, and then but they lost. The, the Giants lost to the Bills, but I felt like the Giants started the the way that like the, the down like the where it seemed like they were so predictable that everyone could figure it out or something. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like the was out, and I I thought that was a testament maybe to Dayball because he was familiar with the system. Okay, maybe that's why he's shutting them down. But yeah, that just lingered for weeks. Yeah, I don't know, man. I still think someone said this on Twitter, and it was just a guy. It was nobody who's just a fan or whatever. They said they were a Bills fan, and they said, "Okay, you know, congratulations. Another week went by. You didn't let Allen get hurt." And I get what he means because it doesn't seem like they just don't let him. Here's a guy who was hurtling people, steamrolling people. Yeah, yeah. you can tell. Him. It, it reminds me of Fields. It's almost like they told stay there. Don't don't do it. And that's messed up because that's his that's his thing. Yeah, and even Fields called out his coaching, like you know, said something about the coaching. And and yeah, yeah. I mean in, in today's NFL, I mean, the mobile quarterback is is the you know, pretty much like the dominant player of the league. And whatever whether it's Lamar Jackson or the I mean Brock Purdy might be an exception, but he's got mobility, but you got Jalen Hurts, you got Right. Mark Jackson, you know, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about here. And it's, you know, Josh Allen. And, you know, the thing, the funny thing is, is Allen suffered two major, not major, but injuries in the pocket. The the elbow yeah. against the Jets, he got hit in the pocket, blindsided. And, and then the shoulder injury happened in the pocket uh, that he's been dealing with. So if he's going to get injured in the pocket, he might as well let the guy run. At least he can see what's in front of him. Stiff arm guys, hurdle guys, whatever he does. And, and you yeah. know, let, let him be, let him be him, you know. At this point, I would. I that, maybe that's what this new guy does. I, I, you know, uh, Joe Burrow loves him. I guess from his time at U LSU, the new offensive coordinator, he was oh, like uh, Joe Brady. Yeah, yeah, he was Ray. Oh my God, he was so he couldn't. You know, about time everything he was saying about how how uh, innovative he is and all that. So this will be interesting. Maybe you know, and and then uh, you got guys like Bart Scott. Uh, I'll watch like get up for like ten minutes before I mm -hmm. turn it off because those guys. It's, it's, <laughs> this is brutal, but. Bart Scott is such a Bills hater, and and he um, he just laughed. He said, "You're you're gonna uh, hang all your hopes on a guy that got fired by Matt Rule in Carolina." 
And, you know, there's more of a background of a story to that, that Matt Rule wanted to, you know, kind of almost what maybe McDermott and Dayball went through. There's a specific offense Matt Rule wanted to run, and there's an offense that Brady wanted to run, and they just they were just butting heads, and then he was cut. Um, I don't know if that's going to be the case here because McDermott can't get out of his own way with this running game. Yeah. Um, and try and bring it back to like the late 90s football. But, you know, you could see the exchange too. Um, you know, if you're just kind of digging for rumors, the exchange between Dayball and, and McDermott at the end of that Giants Bills game was very brief. Uh, yeah. They didn't want to even deal with each other. So you could tell there was maybe some tension there. Yeah. If they don't make the playoffs this year or something like that, I it's, it's got to be maybe, maybe McDermott gets, gets canned. It's possible. Yeah. I, you know, yeah, that or you got to go outside. I mean, you definitely got to go outside, outside the organization for a new coordinator if they don't uh, get rid of McDermott. Absolutely, and then and hopefully get a defensive coordinator and take that away from from McDermott as well. He's right. done an okay job with the defense and the injuries that they're dealing with, but there might be some argument to be made that it is taken away from his game management, which hasn't been that great anyway. Thirteen right. seconds, um, but you know it was even worse with the twelve men on the field. I mean, that's just that's high school shit, man. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't even – I was saying to – I think it was my son. I'm like, man, the guy wasn't even running off. They was just lined up. Like, it wasn't – you know, sometimes if someone's running off trying to get off the field, they were just there, man. Yeah. Too many men. Yeah. yeah. And they, they, you know, and they had plenty of time. They had about two or three downs to figure it out before they knew Denver was going to try to kick a field goal. Big mess. So, yeah, McDermott, if, if he's not going to get – if if you know, the playoffs are going to save him, no doubt. If they don't make the playoffs, I could still see him – staying another year but then right. two, two non-playoff years there's no way he survives that i would yeah guess. yeah hold on one second you're gonna have to go in one second there charlie can you go see who's there and let them know we're doing a show all of a sudden we got we got visitors <laughs> i sent people there yeah these sent people yeah, <laughs> they sent people. yeah right. I, I sent chris and uh <laughs> the rest of the crew are gonna do a live show at your house george shire's here yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a lot of it. Let me make sure everything's okay. Yeah. Are we all right? We've never we've never had this. This is fun. Anyways, um, we'll wait for Robin. Will be back in one second. And um, tomorrow, tomorrow though, we're going to be at two o'clock. False count anywhere. Reggie Harp, right? Reggie Harp. Yeah, Reggie has joined us before when we were back in the old studio days, and he's got the awesome collection of, of championship belts. He's already given me like a little preview of what he's going to. Uh, show us on the show tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's good. Rob, just set it there. You can just set it there. That's fine. Just set it there. Don't want to hold that. It's too heavy. Put that over there. That's fine. Here, come on back. We're going to do picks now. Okay. That's outstanding. This circus. Um, <laughs> uh, Pizza delivery prank or something? No, I, I wish. She wishes. You can't eat salt anymore. Oh, geez. Sodium's gone in this house. Oh, yikes. Yeah. The kidneys don't allow it, man. Um, all right, let's get into the games. Let's get into the games. We're 44, 24, and 1 against the spread, which is 63.7% in the NFL, 65.7% in college football, 25 and 13. So we're making money as we do these games. Um, I usually I mean, don't, so I hope I don't kill the record here. <laughs> we're a dude. Yeah, I will. No. All right, let's get it going because I don't want to keep you all night. Robin, you ready? Ready. All right. Oh, so if we're ready, we got to do this. Hold on. Damn it. I do this on the wrestling show too all the time. So don't, I know Charlie's used to it. Well. All right, we're back. Let's make money. Um, let's start out, Charlie. The first game, one o'clock. Boy, this is I, Joe Flacco's working out for the Browns. I got the Steelers at Cleveland, and if you have a different line, let me know. I got Cleveland minus one. Okay, that's pretty much like a pick 'em uh, at that point. What do you think? Anything on this one? That's a tough one. This is in Cleveland. In Cleveland. Cleveland. Now they just got the news about Deshaun Watson, so they're rolling with PJ Walker. Is that correct? Yep. Um, although it's not as if. You know they're facing like a, an elite offense with Pittsburgh either, so low so game for sure. You got the two best defensive players in the league, or two of the best, with Watt with Pittsburgh, and of course Miles Garrett with Cleveland. That is a tough one. I, I 
I'm going to yeah. give the edge here to Pittsburgh only because of Mike Tomlin. The guy just knows how to orchestrate wins on game day. No matter how – they've been outgained every game this season, and they've I, still won six games. It's yeah. insane how good of a coach he is. Yeah, because Pickett is terrible, right? The QB's bad. Uh, Pickens is, bit, is complaining repeatedly. Yeah, it's bad. Even Najee Harris isn't good. It's it's bizarre. Yeah. Robin, any thought on this one at all? I, I like Pittsburgh a little Would bit. Would you too. give it out, or is this one we don't give out, but we we kind of lean Pittsburgh? What do you think? I would say lean Pittsburgh. Yeah, I guess so, too. Because, yeah, yeah Cleveland's good. That defense is good. I mean, if P.J. Walker can just be, I think, they might actually be better than – oh, my God, Pittsburgh 6-3. and three. It'll actually probably be a fun game, but we won't give this out. But if we were, if we had a gun to our head, we're going to go with the Steelers. Right. Yeah, yeah, division game, and, and it's two good defenses, two bad offenses. Yeah, I, I have to go in that type of game, hard-hitting uh, type of style that they usually play. Then, then yeah, I'd have to give it a slight uh, edge to Pittsburgh there. All right, the next one o'clock game, guys, is the Chargers are going to Green Bay. Green Bay is at home, and they're plus three. Ooh, is there yeah. anything that stands out to you, Robin, and that that on that game? Um, then we'll see what Charlie thinks. I think that I would say the Chargers. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is should, a bad game. <laughs> they should be good. They yeah. should. They should be good. They, they should be able to easily beat Green Bay, who I think is one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah, I would have to yeah. go with the Chargers. What, what do you think, Charlie? Yeah, I, I'm thinking – I almost said San Diego. Ooh, uh, I'm thinking L.A. <laughs> also. Um, you know, the Chargers are a mystery. You know, they, they, they have so much talent, but it, it's like they find ways to lose games. They're almost Buffalo Bill-like in a way. Um but yeah, Green Bay is really not that good, and I really don't think I, I think if the Chargers can put up some points, it's going to be tough for Green Bay to keep up. I, I'll go with I'd go with the Chargers on that. You want to? I'm going to put that out. Yeah, that'll be one game we actually take. Chargers, uh, minus three on the road though. Man, that's scary up in Green Bay and all that. It's cold, you know. Yeah, yeah for, I think they're due though. I think the Chargers are due. Uh, to yeah. Win the win. Well, yeah, they beat the hell out of the Bears, and how much better are the Packers really than the Bears? Right. Mm-hmm. Not right. much. Right. Speaking yeah. of them, unfortunately, and this though I'm going to say, I'll let you guys deal with this one. The Bears are plus seven and a half at Detroit. I think Detroit probably kills them. I do like Justin Fields scares me a little that he could be something that could make this game closer than it should be. Yeah. If it was in Chicago and the Bears were getting seven and a half, I might go with the Bears. Yeah. But what do you think, uh, Charlie? You know, um, it's a tough one. Detroit's kind of tough too because they got absolutely destroyed by Baltimore, and you know I wasn't expecting that. That Detroit is definitely the better team here, um, but a seven-point spread in a division game is tough. With Fields coming back, I, I I'd go with Chicago with the points, but I, I'd take Detroit in the game. Right, the seven and a half. Yeah, Robin, how about you? I agree with Charlie. I would take the points um, with the Bears, but. Obviously, money line. If it's that close, though, that'll be something for the Bears. If yeah. they can keep this game to that under 10, that because they're going to have a hard time. I, they're so weird. Who the hell knows? They, you know, it's the biggest they, dump. They, they should just force feed DJ Moore all night. Um, yeah. I just think he's such a good receiver, and he's a little bit underutilized, man. Well, I mean, they've had quarterback issues with the injuries and everything, but if DJ Moore could go off, they could at least keep it close, and, and Fields coming back is definitely going to be a factor. I think Khalil Herbert's back, too. Probably, yeah. All right, we'll go with the Bears and Montez Sweat. We'll, we'll, we'll put that out, plus the seven and a half. All right, next one. Uh, you know, it's Dallas at Carolina. Carolina's plus ten and a half. Last week, we went with Dallas minus 17. So should this be any different? Charlie, what do you think? You know, Dallas at home puts up a ton of points. Dallas on the road... I mean, Carolina's really not going to be too tough of a time, but 10 and a half points is kind of on the edge of where I'm at with that game, like a 10 point game. Um, yeah. Carolina has been playing a little better lately. I, mean, I don't know. Dallas finds a way to disappoint, though, too. So, I mean, I I, I would go with Carolina with the points. Dallas is going to win the game. But I think Carolina getting 10 and a half covered. Robin? 
I would go with Dallas, but not strongly. I think that, I mean, Carolina's the worst team in the league. Dallas should beat the hell out of them. So, but you know how that goes. Right. right. But I know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. How up can Dallas be? I mean, they could do this without guys. I'm sure, you know, you, you wouldn't even need Dak to win this game, probably. Yeah. It almost reminds me of that game they played against Arizona, um, where I was just like, oh, they're going to kill Arizona. And then they ended up yeah. losing that game. And I feel like, okay, maybe they've figured out not to fall into those trap games like that. But right. I don't know. I can see Carolina being a little scrappy here. Yeah. Let's not give this one out. Yeah. I know Frank Reich, I think, took back the play calling. So who knows? Oh, um, okay. That guy's going to get fired. Probably. He's, I think the time has passed him by a little bit. Like, I think the league has blown by. Here's another one. I was talking about the team that was getting 17. We have the Giants and DeVito at quarterback oh, at Washington. Washington's minus nine. And I made the point to Robin. Sam Howell has been pretty good, at least fantasy football-wise. He's throwing the ball everywhere. Yeah. And uh, after they unloaded everyone, too, they got rid of Sweat and Chase Young and – and they, I don't know, but do you guys, what do you, I, I almost, I, I want to get your opinions. I fit, I feel like I like Washington to cover. Yeah. Washington is obviously the better team. Um, well, I shouldn't say obviously, but they are the better team. The giants have been a mess offensively and you're right. Sam Howell is, is a, is a pretty decent quarterback. Um, yeah, I, I'd have to go with Washington to cover on that. The giants are just, I yeah, thought they would cover the 17 and a half against Dallas. I thought they would at least keep it within three possessions, but man, they got absolutely destroyed. DeVito's bad. He's yeah. like, yeah. the Bears, the Bears backup badge in is better. And he's from Shepherd University. This right. DeVito is. Yeah. Might as well be not, DeVito at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Do, do you like that? You want to put that out? Yes. Okay. We go with Washington. That'll be one of our. Yeah. our plays. That's one of those games though, where it wouldn't surprise me if it ended up being close. Oh, I'll be pissed. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking that they can't, I think that this could be 10, nothing. Like I don't know if the giant if the Giants score. They're so freaking bad, um, and they're in a bad spot because next year they're gonna have a high pick. But how do you take a quarterback when you have Jones and all the money invested in that guy? Right. You know, like such a they're kind of yeah. they're kind of screwed. All right, the next one o'clock game. God, C.J. Stroud has been something, right? Arizona at Houston. Houston is minus five. What do you think, Charlie? I think Houston should cover. Now, the thing is, though, they're coming off a big win off Cincinnati, uh, at Cincinnati. Um, nobody expected Houston to be where they're at right now. Maybe not even them. Right. Uh, and C.J. Stroud has just been phenomenal. Uh, he's setting rookie records right now. I think this is going to be a closer game than than what you might initially think. So I think the the, the spread is not going to be covered. So okay, I, I like Houston to win the game but not cover. Robin? I like Houston to cover. You? I do. All right. We're going to be split on this one because I think then we will. I think we're going to see. I kind of I lean towards the James Conner. Maybe Murray can keep this close. Maybe. You know, you know I, I forgot about uh, Kyler Murray coming back. That's right. He, he did look pretty decent for a guy that was out for a year. He was very mobile. Um, yeah. And that to me, that, that, that actually helps my pick because I think they're I think Arizona might be able to keep it close. And I forgot yeah, about Kyler Murray being back. So, yeah, I, I think. Houston wins the game, but I think they uh, they don't cover the spread. And I we got to we since we don't have a consensus, we won't put it out. But if it were me, I'm going Arizona. And I think they could win outright. I just got a feeling that Houston isn't as good as. I mean, come on, really? I mean, they're good, but they're not. They're yeah, not, they're not they're playoffs. Right, right. right. Yeah, I mean, they're all right. And can CJ Stroud come? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is a magical season. I don't know if he'll ever have a better season in his career. I don't know. The way this Boy, is going. And, and this, that high of beating Cincinnati last week, I mean, that was a huge win. And the way it happened, too, at the last play of the game and, and all that stuff. And that's that's two in a row for them because the week before, it, he had like 39 seconds and did whatever he did, I think, right. or something. Yeah, Tank Dell, who I just uh, grabbed him on yeah. fantasy team there. <laughs> yeah, our fantasy team. Jesus. Oh. Dad, dad. Yeah, too many injuries. All right, let's go on. Um, Jacksonville is minus seven at home against, uh, I would assume it'll be, who's the quarterback? Will Levis, Levis for Tennessee. Um, Jacksonville's weird, but they're good, right? I mean, they're good. Who do you guys like? Who do you like, Charlie? Well, that was seven points, Brad, you said? Seven, we have it at, yeah. Well, Tennessee's getting, I think Tennessee can hang with them. Um, Jacksonville definitely got destroyed last week by San Francisco. So yeah. They're looking to rebound. 
Um, although Tennessee, I think, is scrappy with with Levis and, and of course, Derrick Henry. Um, and I know they traded a couple pieces off their defense at the deadline, but they, I think they'll still be competitive. Um, again, a division game. I, I think Tennessee covers the spread, but Jacksonville wins the game. Robin? I agree with Charlie on this one. Me too. All right. Well, we, we'll put that out. Tennessee's a good one. I like seven's a lot. In a, yeah. This could have been five, yeah. maybe, or something. Four think five, about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a little much. All right, this game now. This game here, I boy, they're happy in Las Vegas. The Raiders, they're dancing, they're doing everything. They're going to Miami, and Miami's minus 13 and a half. But AOC, if he's the quarterback again, I, I don't know, man. I, I Miami should maybe cover this. I want to hear what uh Robin, what do you think first? Then we'll go to Charlie. I I agree with you. I think Miami covers this spread. Um I just don't see Las Vegas being able to hang with them. I think Miami's got too much firepower. I I definitely think Miami covers here. Charlie, what do you think of this one? Yeah, and Vegas was getting how much there? How many? Thirteen points? and a half. Thirteen and a half. Which usually, if, if there's a team getting two touchdowns or close to it, I usually lean towards that team. And, and Vegas has been playing better, smoking their cigars and everything. <laughs> um. Yeah, Miami's just too high powered for them. I, I agree with that because basically, once you take away, you know, Jacobs, is Josh Jacobs still healthy? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Once you take him away, what do the Raiders really have? I mean, how are they going to keep up with a team like Miami that's, right. you know, in South Beach besides, even if it was in Vegas, at the yeah. stadium, either way, I think they're going to roll. Yeah. I don't think, I think they're going to cover it. Yeah. They're having a hard time going with that rookie. He doesn't seem. He doesn't seem ready. I mean, no rookie is, but even this guy, this guy just doesn't, I don't know. Yeah. They, where'd they win? They won last week. Did they put like 16 to 12 or something? Uh, yeah. Whoever they beat. Chicken yeah. It wasn't Green all that Bay. impressive. Yeah. And yeah. then they, they rolled the Giants, which, you know. Right. Was high school could beat the Giants right now. So I know. DeVito, so bad. Yeah. Um, yeah I think Miami covered. Are you okay? Yeah. What's just happened over there? Uh, We're having issues here. This is one of the most. Unbelievable shows. I'm glad you're here, Charlie. Yeah, I've done. I'm, I'm remote here. <laughs> it's like wrestling. And this is like the, the door, I mean, this, it was like when Randy Orton busted in and beat the hell out of everyone that time. That's a yeah. Triple H is out. Yeah, All right, yeah, keep the front window there. Yeah. Yeah. And now Robin just took a flip. I don't know what happened. All okay. right. And now she's good. At four, you're good, right? Yeah. All right. At four o'clock. Uh, this is a weird one to me. Maybe I have the wrong line. This has got to be wrong. Tell me if it's wrong. Someone might have to look it up. I've got Tampa at San Francisco, and San, Fran San Francisco's only minus one? Wow. How is that can't be right. That cannot be right. I must have been blind. How could it be that? That's like basically another pick em, which I don't see that. Tampa Bay is not that bad, but. I would put everything. If it's one, this might be the day. Finally, yeah. that I just cool. unload. Whatever I got, Rob, are you looking it up? I'm looking it up. Yeah, we got to look into that because I'm a little bit – I may. Have, I know my eyes have gone bad. I'm not sure if that's one, and it's not coming up for you. Is it? Oh, here we go. Unless yeah, it's let me, seven, right? Maybe. Yeah, let's see what this is. Maybe it's like 11. Because I don't know, but one to the 49 – you know what I'm saying? They're all healthy. Yeah, in Tampa Bay, I mean, they're, they're kind of up and down a little bit. Um, what is it? 12. Okay. Yeah, oh, I, I had it wrong. Bit. It's 12. Okay. It's 12. It's 12. Okay. Um, like I said, I don't think Tampa's that bad. I, I think they'll keep it somewhat close. But here's the thing, too. When you when they – I you know compare this when they played the Bills, they were down 24-10 in that game, and Buffalo had so many chances to put that game away, make it 31-10, and it could have got out of hand at that point. In right. San Francisco, besides, that, that's a tough one. Purdy looked really good last week. Like, he bounced back from whatever – yeah, he was, whatever was bothering him and the whole team. I mean, they, they destroyed Jacksonville again, though. They're, they're coming off that, that huge win on the East Coast. They're coming back now to the West, back home, of course. But I don't know, 12 points is a good chunk. I, I'm kind of on the fence on this, but I think I'm going to take Tampa Bay with the points. San Fran okay. wins the game by about 10. I think Tampa Bay with 12 covers. Robin, any thoughts? I agree with Charlie on this one. Okay, so consensus, let's go with Tampa plus 12 in this one. Yeah. Um, 
But I'll say this. It wouldn't shock me, though, if this one or the 49ers went by 14. If oh, they just right. went by two touchdowns. You know what I mean? If, if they won 38-3 to three like they did last week, wherever it was. Um, I, I guess if they – yeah, it's like if they get out early. But let's go with Tampa. 12 is a lot. They're both traveling back to the West. You know, they both had to do whatever they got to do to get out West. Well, and the other thing, too, though, whew, now that I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, Tampa Bay has, like, no – has barely any running game. Rashad Boyd's kind of – Inconsistent, yeah. and I know he had a good week last week, but against a bad team, so I, that, that's tough. I, I guess I'll stick with with Tampa Bay getting the twelve. Yeah, it's a tough one. All right, next game. This is for you here, Charlie. The Jets. You owe the Jets one at yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo minus seven again, just like against Denver. They. I've been saying this for four weeks on this show. Every time I pick a Bills game, one of these games they're going to feel better, and they're going to like. Beat the someone you know somewhere in here. They're gonna win like thirty to thirteen or something. Right. Is this, is this the week? Uh, with everything that's happened this week, with the coordinator getting let go, they got uh, Joe Brady in there, and and the team seems to be, according to McDermott, take his word with, with a grain of salt, uh, saying that they're they're re motivated now on offense. They're ready to get out there, but you know. It's been said from the beginning of the year. The Jets' defense is, is Super Bowl caliber. I think they're going to at least keep it close. And the Bills are still trying to figure some things out. So I, I really do think that the Jets will cover. And, and it's going it might come down to like a final possession type of game. Uh, I think the Jets getting seven are going to cover. Robin? I disagree. I think it's going to be the Bills um, all day in this game. I think that they're going to bounce back. And that they're gonna, that they're just gonna look good in this game. Um, I feel like they have to win this one with what they have coming up on their schedule. And I feel like it's a revenge game thing against the Jets. So I like Buffalo. I can yeah. see that too. Their backs are against the wall a little bit. And, and the thing is, now there's an opening in the AFC. I mean, yeah. uh, with Burrow going down and yeah. you know, Watson going down, that final. Wild card spot, and even the division still in play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that final Absolutely. wild card spot's right there. So I mean, yeah, yeah. it's a must win. I yeah. think a lot to play I, for. Yeah, I think if they get after, there could be a lot of turnovers out of Wilson. I do like the Jets' defense though, but yeah, I'm, I I think Buff. This has got to be now. Last week we did go with Denver. So, okay, we got that one right, finally. How many times we lost this with Buffalo? I kept saying, that I'm going to do it one more time. I'm just going to say this is the week that they feel bad. Like, everyone feels better about themselves. Like, they at some gotta, point. they got to protect the ball. It, it, yeah. if, if they only turn it over, I, I feel like a, a Josh Allen turnover is almost inevitable uh, every game now. But hopefully that streak ends. I think he's at six straight. But if, he, if they keep it to one or two turnovers, hopefully none. But if they keep it to one or two, it's going to be – you know, I wouldn't say a comfortable win, but it's going to be close. If they if they eliminate turnovers altogether, I think the Bills could take care of business, win this game by a couple touchdowns, like they should. But they scare me. They, they scare me. Yeah, they just haven't put it together for sixty minutes in a long like, time. If I saw they were up by seventeen going in the second half, I'd be scared a little. I'd still be a little scared that the, we would get closer than it should. It's right. weird. Yeah. Oh, they make me. They're weird as hell because you you watch it. I don't know how you – well, you're a fan of them. And so I don't watch as much as you do, Charlie, because I'll be watching the Bears at the same time. But I'm always waiting for the explosion. Yeah. Like, all right, this is the time. You're right. going to now just just do it. You're going to beat the hell out of them. Maybe Allen fine. think about it. He hasn't run at all. Like, I can't even no. remember the last time that he took off and went – remember those years? He was going for 20, 20-yard 20 yard, 20 yard runs. Yes. You know? They, I don't he, know. He pretty much won them that playoff game last year. He took off running on a huge play that got him a key first down at the end of that game that gave him the lead. So let's he, remember, he to be needed. Remember one last thing about Allen. This is what I was thinking. If they don't have 12 men on the field last week, Allen yes. wins the game for them. He's he, he, he scored right. the drive. They win. Yeah. If they could just not have 12 on the field, what I wonder what happens. Do they fire? Well, they, that'd be interesting because uh he wins the game for them no matter what they – I mean, let me do this way. Last thing on him. I'm I'm not his big, biggest – whatever with him. But, I mean, when Bills fans that I've seen on Twitter trying to tell me they should trade him, they're idiots. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, that's ridiculous. You will be 20 years wishing you had him back. Every decade you'll be searching. Who are you going to draft? What are you going to do? I mean, you're yeah. not going to do anything. 
It's not yeah. happening. There's no, and even Brandon Bean said he'd trade himself before he traded Josh Allen. That's his. Well, Never. yeah, he would be fired before you would do that. Right. Yeah. He's right. I, I right. read a stat today on on uh, online. I think it was on Twitter or X, or whatever. Uh, the Bills are seventeen and one in Allen's career when he has at least ten rushing attempts in a game, um, which is kind of a lot for a quarterback. Ten attempts. Yeah. They're seventeen and one when he, when he runs. So basically, if you just let him be Josh Allen, which hopefully Brady. Uh, is getting in there and getting in McDermott's head a little bit too, like saying, just let this guy go nuts, then, you know, then they're going to be okay. But they're tough to predict sometimes, man. Yeah. Frustrating. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, all right, the next 425 game is Seattle at the Rams, and we got the Rams plus one. Ooh. You know, I, I keep waiting for the Rams to, like, be decent, and then they they, they shit the bed. Um same with the Seahawks. I feel like Geno Smith, like he took that next step, but then he kind of regresses and then he comes back and then he regresses. Another division game. Um, that's going to be, that's a tough one. I guess I'll go with the home team here. Okay. The uh, Rams. Is, is Stafford healthy? I thought Stafford got hurt. Do you not? Or am I incorrect on that? I don't know. That's a good question. He's, he's going to play. He's going to play. He's questionable. Yeah. He's going to play, though. Is that yeah, what you know? He's okay. Playing. He's That's playing. Big. Yeah. That's big. Okay. So if he's playing, yeah, I guess I'll take the Rams at home. Uh, but again, that that's definitely a warranted minus one game because that, that could go either way. Robin, anything? I agree. I'm I'm not real strong on it, but I kind of like Seattle. Okay. This is, a, this is one that I think we're all torn on. Yeah. This is a... I agree there. You're, I, I could go either way with this. Yeah, I could make yeah. an argument either way. I could too. Um, not going to be that great of a game, I don't think. Either. No. no. Um, 820's game is, well, I guess with the way Denver's been playing, it could be decent. With the way Minnesota and Dobbs is playing, you got Minnesota at Denver, Denver minus two and a half. What do that's, you think, Charlie? That's the uh, Sunday night game? Yeah. Yep. Oh, man, how do we get stuck with it and flex that? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Um, and I, he said the Vikings with Dobbs, right? Because we know Cousins is out. Yeah. And we got the Broncos giving up two points. Two and a half, yeah. Two and a half. You know, I, I know Denver just beat the Bills. They just beat Kansas City. But I feel like they, they escaped with a win last week. Um, I'm going to go with the Vikings here. I, I think straight up they're going to win this game. I, I know Denver's been improved, but I love what Josh Dobbs is doing with the Vikings. I still think they got plenty of talent. I I don't know if there's any word yet on Justin Jefferson. I think he's still another week away for them. I think so, yeah. He's not quite back yet. That's definitely a factor. But I, I'm going to go with the Vikings. I know, you know, it, it's I I'm almost want to lean towards the Broncos at home. They're feeling good. But I feel like they they might get the carpet pulled out from underneath them a little bit. I'm going to go with Minnesota on that. Robin? You know what? I, Charlie talked me into that at the beginning. I like Denver, but I think I I think I like Minnesota. I really like Dobbs as the smartest guy that ever plays a rocket scientist. I mean, he's something else. This guy, he's he's actually he's, 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 he is yeah he really is. This guy, no wonder why he picks a playbook so quick. It doesn't matter. He just steps in and uh, and does well. So. Yeah, let's go with the rocket scientist. I like that too. Have now, him and uh, Fitzpatrick like on Jeopardy or something together. Oh, could you imagine that group? Yeah. I'll tell you, Fitzpatrick. By the way, he's pretty funny. I gotta give it to him. He's not bad in the. Uh, uh, Fitz. Yeah, he's pretty funny. Fitz magic. Oh, he's, oh, he's awesome. Maybe he had no shirt on after the game and, and yeah. all that stuff in, in Buffalo. So that was. <laughs> he's a lunatic. Yeah. All right, so yeah. Oh, here's the big one: Monday night uh, rematch, Philadelphia at Kansas City. It's a oh I mean two and a half. It's Kansas City minus two and a half. Um, I I, I we're going to be split on this. I bet I'm going to tell you who I like first. I like I think I like Philadelphia in this one. Um, I I don't. Oh God, Kansas City is what they. I can playoff Kansas City is different than regular season Kansas City in my mind too. Um, is Kelsey the, healthy or is he still banged up? It looks like he's okay, or Travis, yeah. right? He's okay. The other Kelsey's okay. That she'll be in the crowd. You know, <laughs> what you call the ex, uh, our guy. Uh, his, you know, it's his bowl. So I, I'm going to go with the Eagles. What do you think, Charlie? Ooh, this is another tough one. I, I think Philly's been kind of skating by with their record. You know, they, like they haven't like dominated anybody, but they got an impressive. What are they eight and one? Yeah. Um, 
Kansas City, and in, 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 in a small rant here, Kansas City's all of their tough games. They got Buffalo in a couple of weeks, Philadelphia, and then they got some other tough games. They're all at home. They're, like, they're never on the road <laughs> for a tough game. Um, yeah. And I, I think just that Arrowhead atmosphere, I feel like Mahomes always finds a way in those types of games. Uh, we're getting into like crunch time of the season. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with KC. Philly's going to be motivated. It's a rematch. They're eating one. They're feeling good themselves. You know, um, this is a coin toss, if you ask me, but I'm going to go with Kansas City. And I, think, I think they'll cover. I think a three point win for Kansas City. You're going to break the tie, and who we're going to go with? Who do you like? I like Kansas City. You like the Chiefs? Okay. I, Andy Reid is the tiebreaker for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He is big in big games. He yeah. sure is. All right, yeah, I'll go with the Chiefs, too. We'll put them out. So, all right, so here's what we got. And I'm going to let Charlie go because he's got to get ready for a false count anywhere with me off tomorrow and all that. All right, yeah, we went with some show prep, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to get a hold of management. We got the Chargers uh, minus three, the Bears plus seven and a half, Washington minus nine, Tennessee plus seven. We went with Miami minus 13 and a half, Tampa plus 12. We were kind of split on this one. Buffalo minus seven. I, I'm going to give that one out. Um, Minnesota, we've all liked plus two and a half. And then Kansas City minus two and a half. Uh, Charlie, thanks for joining us, sitting in for Scott today. Yeah, it was fun, guys. Um, you know, next time when Scott's back, you know, roll with a three headed monster here. I'm down with that too. So, or four headed in that case, we got Robin in the background there. So, yep. um, yeah, uh, thanks for having me, guys. It was nice just to kind of. Uh, talk some sports and, and shoot the shit with you guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah definitely nice to have you. Yeah, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, Paul Hi, Charlie. You join us. See you guys. Yep. All right. So that's Charlie Turner, Falls Count Anywhere co host with Chris DiCarlo. You'll see me there just uh, flipping switches on, <laughs> or whatever you want to say, or pushing buttons yeah. or hitting the screen. All right. How about some college football? Are you ready for that? Yeah. All right. Here's my college picks. Um, I like Michigan to cover against Maryland, Michigan minus 19. I like Clemson to beat North Carolina. Clemson's minus six. I don't know why, but I like Clemson in this game. I think Oregon, Oregon State beats Washington and knocks them out from being undefeated this week. So I like the Beavers plus one. They don't worry about what the number is because I think Oregon State, and that causes chaos. Everyone will be 10 and one. We'll have a whole thing. And, uh, and, Next year, come play out. Think about what you got. Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Florida State, Washington, Oregon, Texas, Alabama. There's eight. So you're going to get four more right. to join this. I, I don't see how anyone doesn't like it. Yeah. I like I that it. a lot. I cannot wait for that. Um, so those are our picks for college. Wa Oregon State, Michigan, Clemson. There's, there's some good games this week. Check out, obviously. I think Georgia plays Tennessee. That's always tough. Um, I think Georgia's like minus 10 and a half. Yeah. I don't know. I, I almost picked Georgia on that one. Tennessee's always very disappointing to me, you know? Yeah. But they could keep it close and just lose at the end. Um, but that's it, Robin. I guess that that's it for us tonight. Yeah. That's all. Tomorrow, Falls Con Anywhere. Yes. 2 p.m. Reggie Harp will be with us. He does the, he's got all those wrestling belts and stuff. He's got some cool stuff set up. For Charlie and Chris, um, George should be with us too. Uh, what else? We will probably, as long as everything's all right, we'll have uh, Citizens United on Monday. Yes. Um, that's just a local show here in Western New York. But on Tuesday, Pocket, um, somewhere in there, me and Jim Berenger will get together for a uh, um, final word on hockey. And then, of course, this show, Scott Taggart will be back and we'll all be ready to go. So I'll post all of our picks so you guys can see them. Don't forget, in the NFL, we are sitting at 44, 24, and 1. Um, I'll tell you, that's... So if you hear it here, buy that. Oh, God. Do you really want to say that to the people? No. <laughs> but we are 40. So you know what? Actually, if you hear it here, you probably go against us. Because we're probably due to lose. Right. When you think about it, it's kind of a, a sick way of looking at it. But that's how you look at it when you... Yeah. You're never used to being 63%. Right. And 65% in college. I remember... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all. That's money for the people. All right, why don't we get out of here, Robin? We'll go and watch some uh, Bellator and stuff. I think we got a good card coming up there in UFC or, yeah. or MMA. What am I saying? Yeah. All right. Danny Sabatello. All right, everybody. We will see you guys next week. Check online. We'll give you our picks or remind you about them. Take care.
Take care.